Hi, I'm Donna Dewberry. I'm in the Plaid studio today with another project in the Let's Paint with Plaid Wreath of the Month program. 25 years ago, I created a technique where I teach you how to properly load a brush so you can blend shade and highlight in one stroke. Now in August wreath of the month, we are gonna paint this wreath full of sunflowers. We're gonna start out with this beautiful sky in the background and show you how to do some shading with that. Then we're gonna put in a grapevine wreath that has twisted vines around the wreath itself. And then I'm gonna take single petals and put all those petals together to make all those beautiful sunflowers that are in this wreath. Then we come in with our greenery and we fill it with all kinds of little filler flowers that are gonna be really fun. And when you're finished with it, you can put a bow on it and hang it on your door. And to make it easier for you, we have made the wreaths for you out of a beautiful birch plywood with already having the holes drilled to hang it with. And there's the beauty of it is that you can paint on both sides and there's two other shapes with wreaths that we've been painting during the year. We also put together a kit with the wreath of the month, all the worksheets, brushes, paints, everything you need to be painting this beautiful wreath with me. If you'd like to purchase these items, please visit platonline.com forward slash let's paint. So please follow me in the studio and let's paint. Okay guys, I'm ready to paint this big, beautiful wreath to hang on my front door. What about you? I'm thrilled to be here today and showing you how to make these big, beautiful sunflowers, the other beautiful cobalt flowers I put in here, some little yellow daisies. And this is a different wreath. It's a wider, different like grapevine with twisted grapevine around it. And you can see that happening as we paint it. All right, so lots of fun green. So let's start out with what we're gonna do to get this wood surface ready to hang outside on your front door. The first thing I've got is this great birch plywood, which is going to have this wonderful folk art multi-surface paint on it, which is going to seal it really nice so it's ready to hang on your door. I have the two holes that I need to make sure to hang with that they're up at the top as I'm laying out my design. That's something a couple of times in my life I've made a mistake with, so I'm just giving you heads up to be thinking that. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your sanding block and you're gonna lightly sand and knock off any raised little grain first. Then what you're gonna do is I painted with um, a neutral color. I just did a first coat on here so that it has um, a nice finish. So what's gonna happen is I put the first coat on and you can use your sponge painters and you can put your first coat on here. And I just do nice smooth coats, let it dry. You'll see highlights where the wood kind of sucked it up a little bit more. Then you're gonna take your sanding block and you're gonna, when that's totally dry, you're gonna knock off any of it. You just sit there and fill it because you don't want this, um, painting that we're gonna do to ha not lay down smooth and pretty. It's gonna make a better finished project, all right? So then I put a second coat on and then you're ready to go. So that second coat won't raise the grain because you've already knocked that off from the raw wood, okay, being painted the first time. Now I'm gonna pick out my color that I want for the background. And if you see on our piece, I had the light blue in the middle and then I went around and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna accent the edges to make it really pop on you here. So I'm gonna take my sponge and I'm gonna dampen it, this is my painter sponge, and dampen it with just a little bit of water, but not very much, we're just dampening it. Then I'm gonna pick up the cobalt, I'm gonna get a good amount of that, and then I'm gonna grab the white, all right? So as I'm taking the titanium white and the cobalt blue, around in circles along here. I might come back to get more titanium white and that's gonna make it the lighter colors. And I wanna see movement. So I'm gonna go all the way to the edge, even though I'm gonna make those darker. And I like movement and I'm making circles. So sometimes you've seen me do slip slap with a sponge. This is more of a circular motion, but I don't wanna see circles, all right? I just wanna see movement. So I'm still picking up white, uh, a little bit more blue, okay? 
all the way around. And see this with a sponge painter, it makes this very quick background. And we're going to put so much on top of this background. Lots of fun, pretty elements you're going to be learning so that we can have something we can hang with pride on our front door, a, wreath, a beautiful wreath. Okay, so I ran out of white. You can see that I need a little bit more or a little bit more on here. Okay, so titanium white, cobalt blue gives you this nice, pretty color. Now what I want to make sure is in the middle, that's what you're going to see. So I, I can come in here and just move it in again, move some color in with this circular motion to give me movement. So it's not just flat. Okay. Kind of like clouds, a pretty sky. All right. So let's come here all the way to the outside edge. And there we go. All right. Now, this has a rounded edge. It makes it really nice. Don't use the, I find a lot of people using the flat edge because when you're doing the flat edge, you tend to see straight lines. All right. So if you have spots that you feel like it needs a little bit more, I can just tap them. But one little trick I want you to know that if this starts drying and you continue moving a sponge on this, when it starts drying, it's going to lift up that paint because it's going to start sealing. It's going to lift up that paint and go straight down to the wood. What you do at that point is you have to let it totally dry and then add more paint. Okay, so I've picked out my smaller painter sponge and I'm going to come around here and I really didn't wet this sponge. I just want to get the blue on the outside edge. Okay, now I did dry it slightly and I'm ready to come in here and I'm just going to go around. I can make circles but I really want to shade this in like this. All right, just back and forth all the way around. And also, I'm going to repeat this. I don't want to get on the table right now, but on this edge, I would do all the blue, darker blue, which is the cobalt blue on the outside edge. All right, and that finishes off your wreath really nice. And you might pick um, like your treasure gold or something else on the outside edge if you're going to paint on both sides of this wreath. Just keep that in mind. A neutral color that will work. Even though this looks really pretty with the dark blue cobalt on there. Okay, so I'm going to have Reese right up to this so it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just shading it. And sometimes I shade this with a brush, but I want you to see very quickly I can get a nice shading with the sponge. All right, so next step, guys, we're going to jump into our teaching guide and see how to do this grapevine that I want to do on here. All right, so I'm putting both those sponges in the water so they don't dry out on us, right? And we're going to take and work on this grapevine right here. So what I use on this grapevine is I'm using the Pueblo, all right, and I'm going to use some burnt umber as I'm using, as I'm working with this. And every once in a while I touch a teeny bit of the titanium white. So let me show you what happens here. I'm going to decide that this is a three finger wreath, three fingers next to each other. And, I, and I'm not inside this area, I'm right outside. See, if I come outside of this by just a little bit and then had it loose three fingers, then that's going to give us um, a good place. If you're concerned about that, you could take about gauging that. You can go along like this and just lightly with your chalk figure out about where you want to be. All right, that's going to help you a little bit, make it easier than do that. And then decide I want it about that wide. Okay, so let's pick up I'm going to go ahead and use a foam plate too and pick up the Pueblo and the Burnt Umber. And we already have a little bit of white there if we need it. There we go. Okay, now we're going to use our three-quarter inch brush. I'm going to dampen it. I'm going to lay it in the paper towel. 
get that excess water out and then I'm ready to go. So wh what you'll see here is you're going to see exactly how we picked it up and I went back and forth. And then I did some streaks throughout here and then you chisel, push down hard and chisel and you practice that right on there and wipe it off so you know the style of wreath we're doing. So I'm picking up both colors. I'm working it in, okay? A lot of paint on here. And then I'm gonna go around, back and forth. And that's gonna be your base because then we're gonna do a lot of detail on there, okay? Look how pretty that color is with that bright blue. All right, so now what's gonna happen is I'm gonna streak this back and forth. See how I'm gonna have a little grapevine chisel, the dark following, the burn numbers following. So whatever follows is the predominant color. So right here, now I'm gonna show you that this is finished all the way around, but I have some step out, so I'm just gonna take and show you how to twist the vine around this, and then we'll go to our step out, which is gonna show you the wreath all on there, ready for us to create our flowers, okay? So there's where we're at. So I just gauge, do I want, it's kind of a tight wreath, it's not a very loose wreath, because that's gonna be twisted. Now, I'm going to come here a little bit white with the burn number, just a little bit. And putting a little bit of light in there gives it more realistic look. Look, just a teeny bit. Okay, look, go back and forth. That's a little bit much. But I, as long as you sputter that a little bit here and a little bit there. See, that made a more realistic look. Okay, now let's pick up more paint, same brush. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of titanium white, work that in. All right, so now this is where we're gonna be. We're gonna start anywhere in here, and then we're gonna push down. Let's do it a darker, let's do a burnt umber so you really see it first. And then you're gonna weave it up underneath. And then I'm gonna come across and do it again here and put it underneath again. So you're twisting it all the way around your wreath. And you know what guys, you can make it tighter. You can make it you know, more busy than that. But what I'm going to do is take that little bit of titanium white that I put in there and I'm going to put a few more streaks because this isn't just one vine usually you're twisting just a few little vines to get around this wreath and hold it. One's not, one has little teeny vines on it, so, so you're gonna just keep going here. And you can put little curls off of that if you want to. But we have so much going on, I don't know how much of that you'll end up seeing. Okay. Make sure it just looks like it is a twisted little vine on top of here. All right, so I can add more titanium white if I want to. Okay. So now you just continue this all the way around and the wreath's ready for us to start embellishing it. All right, so I'm gonna put this to the side and I want you to make sure that you see that all those little extra vines are right there for you to follow and the colors and all to go with you to go while you're while you're figuring out what you need next thing we're going to do is let's learn the sunflower and we're going to put this down and i have the step out already so that as we practice the sunflower you guys can paint it right on your piece while you still are remembering oh that stroke's good all right, I didn't finish the grapevine on here, right from here to here, guys, because this is gonna be solid flowers, all right? So see how we've got all the nice vine in here? And I can decide later if I want some little trailing script liner wiggles in there, like uh, tendrils that are on the grapevines. Um, but we'll see, like, if there's spots that we could do that with. 
All right, so we have this wreath ready. This is all dry, ready to go. And what I want to share with you is how fun the sunflower is. So this sunflower is going to have double layers. If you can see, I have the original strokes on the outside like this. And some of you might have painted that before, and some of you haven't. So when you see that this one stroke can do all this beautiful sunflower with a little bit of pouncing, you're going to have fun, I promise. So what we're going to do is get our scruffy brush. All right, this is our three-quarter scruffy. And when you get this out of the package, guys, you've got to fluff it. See that? Nice and fluffy. All right, now this is going to pounce, all right? When we do really small areas, we have a smaller scruffy. And this scruffy is a quarter inch, and you fluff that too. And the key to the scruffy brush is that we do not wet this brush unless we're cleaning it, all right? So now what's going to happen, I still have plenty of brown here to show you. There's no water in this. We're going to get the other two colors we need before we start. And so in my double loader, I'm going to put yellow ochre, and we're going to put yellow ochre there, and we're going to use a lot of it, all right? And then I'm going to put moon yellow. And so every once in a while, you could pick up a touch of white if you feel like you need it. But this is going to be pretty bright on this dark background, so it'll be kind of nice. But I'm going to go ahead and just add a little bit in case you feel like you need to dip into it. All right, so what we're going to use here is some floating medium. goes right in the middle, and it's nice because it doesn't run all over your palette because it's got its own little cubby. All right, so I'm just going to use up this because it's here, and it's not as easy to pounce all the double pouncing inside of there, it's inside of your double loader. So I'm going to take the bottom half, and I'm going to do the burnt umber. All right, you can't see, but it's at about half. And then the top half, I'm going to use Pueblo. Hear that pouncing? That pouncing is what you're also going to do on your piece. All right, so this is what we're going to do. We're, this is a little big for here, but I'm going to go ahead and show you on here. We're going around. All right, now the key is we pounced around from here to here. And then we're going to pounce around to the other side. So this is the key, that this Pueblo is going to cover the brown and come back around to meet, but the dark brown is going to come around with you. All right, so pounce, continue, come over. And this, what this is looking like is a donut, a chocolate donut with maple syrup <laughs> icing on top. You see that? So what's going to happen is while that's wet, we're going to bring in, let's get our 12. We're going to bring our 12 flat. We're going to dampen that brush, dry it off. Now what's going to happen here while this is wet, you're going to grab both these two colors. And I'm going to go back and forth, yellow ochre and moon yellow. And from then on, you're just picking up. You don't have to do this. You're just going to grab color. And we want a lot of color. So see how much is there? Then I grab this, I push down, and I stand up. And I do that all the way around. Well, here is your stroke where you practiced it. So let me wipe this off and let you see. See, we're going to start right here, push, and turn slightly as you stand up. Push, turn, and stand up to a tip. All right? Now you want to see the moon yellow and the yellow ochre. All right, so we're just going to wipe this right here and restroke this right here. We're going to grab, this petal is going to grab some dark in the middle right here. And the key to making this look good is that we are grabbing this and pulling from the wet center. All right, and so it would go all the way around. Can you see how we went all the way around? Right here. Now this is a good example to show you. I'm going to touch this and come around and do this. But then the second layer, now these layers have the brown streaks in it. The second layer, you would do shorter and like I can do more of the moon yellow, more moon yellow, and grab it and pull it. 
and have that second layer, but I want you to see what else happens with the second layer is it's shorter and it's gonna come around and touch and be shorter all the way around. But you can see it still gets streaks in it and the streaks are gonna show better when they're not on a slick surface, all right? So all the way around and see the pretty second layer. And that second layer might pick up more of the Pueblo or the Burr number, but also it has streaks and it looks really pretty. I did come in here because sometimes it didn't quite have some and I used a script liner, but I want you to see the next thing that happens and I can even use my smaller scruffy is I have this um, Pueblo on it and I'm gonna come in here and just tap a little teeny bit of yellow ochre. All right, just a little bit. And I want you to see right here, there's this right here, it looks like a moon. And we're gonna tap right in here and get a little bit more and tap the moon shape right there. Now I'm gonna do a few of these on our piece so you'll be able to see how it comes together but that's all you're gonna do when you're done. So uh, this key right here, the key to that making that whole sunflower is, is how we pounce the first part of that, which is the donut. Let me lay this over here. Okay, let's get some of these sunflowers all laid out on here. And like I said before, it helps you with the chalk. Let's put them on there. Let's decide where we want them. I know I want one in here and see how big it is. I might be sure that I have enough room for a petal right there. So, so we have enough room for a petal. We're gonna make sure that we don't go too big and that we don't, don't go too close to the edge. So let's come here and I, it's okay to overlap a little bit, but just make your circles like that because then you get a good shape. You, uh, I didn't know if you know that, but if you make, continue to make circles, then you get a great circle. <laughs> All right, instead of oval. So one, two, three, a little bit of a triangle. But I can also come in here. All right, I gotta be careful that they don't touch. It's okay if they touch, but if they touch too much, it might make you unhappy. All right, so I also have a different triangle. Then I have my bud. The bud's gonna be out here like this. All right, so one, two, three. They're not straight, which that's good. You don't want it straight in a straight line. That's why you want to have some up and some down. All right. So remember what I said, the key is that you can only do one center at a time. Do you remember why? So it doesn't dry. It has to be wet when you're starting this, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start pouncing here. Let's look at our center again. It started here. And this is more the size of the scruffy brush on this wreath on the teaching guide. It's a little smaller. But I'm trying to get it all in. And then I'm going to come on this side. And you got to make sure you have plenty of brown, plenty of brown, plenty of Pueblo. Pounce, 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 and come around and touch again. See, so make sure you get lots of that Pueblo on there. So. You get a nice finish all the way around. Okay, I'm still gonna come in because I wanna see the oval. See, I can just tap the oval and I can tap some brown in there, some burn number if I'm having a problem. All right, so let's take the three quarter, nope, let's take the 12. 12, we want it big, but not a three quarter size. All right, so I'm gonna pick up these two colors and have your guide right next to you so you remind yourself Oh, now what's next? I've got to grab this edge, push down, turn slightly and stand up. See that lump there? I want to take that away. All right, so touch, push, turn and stand up. Now you decide how long you want these petals. All right, but they touch each other and they also grab the wet brown. Now see, I got carried away right here. So I can do one of two things. I can push it up a little bit, or I can just use some of that to streak my petal. Okay, so we're gonna come all the way around, pushing and pulling. See the streaks? But remember, we put a brighter row of petals on top, so it's okay if it gets a little brown. 
but sometimes you might have seen me use licorice, but I like more using the dark brown, the burnt umber, because then it doesn't get so dark. So there we are, trying to get your, your wet center to help you streak. All right, so now I wipe that brush a little bit and just start picking up the moon yellow. So the moon yellow, I'm gonna grab here, see, and put a few of the shorter ones. And they don't have to be between every single one, but that kind of helps you. And I don't mind if there's a few ridges. It just gives a little bit of dimension to this. Okay. See how that pops? It helps because it's got the dark underneath. And you can see I went one too, too, one too many. So sometimes I tell you a lot of times that you might have to pick up paint every stroke. And you see I go right back over the stroke if I don't like it. So isn't that pretty? And it pops and it's giving us the look that I want. Now the last thing to do to my sunflower is I come back over here and I re-pounce the scruffy. And then I'm gonna come here and re-pounce around the edges because I don't want um, to have them cutting into the center. So I carefully pounce all the way around there, get that nice pounce, and also your Pueblo. Now I can come back, guys, and do all of that moon highlight and all of them at one time, but you can't do this all at one time. You gotta do each one, okay? So as it's wet. All right, so let's do another slow one so you can see. I'm pouncing up in the first half of the circle, and then I'm gonna come right here and pounce the second half, which is down here, and you wanna see dark brown already pre-shaded for you. And that's the beauty of one stroke painting. The sunflower is one of the perfect things to sh share with you about one stroke painting is that, oops, is that you see the shading as you go. You didn't have to go back and reshade it later. You're also picking up both these colors at one time. You're grabbing the wet and pulling so you don't have to add the streaks later. Okay, now I want you to work on having them all go straight out, not like a sundial. I want them to all kind of touch and pull out, but how long you make them is up to you. So we want to head outward. And it's okay to go past the wreath. See, look how nice those look. Okay, now I'm still gonna go in with all yellow this time, but this is when I kind of wipe the brush. So I'm just getting the moon yellow. And then, all the way around. So getting just the moon yellow shows you how well that pops. Where are we at? Right there and right there. Okay. Now repounce it because I always end up losing my shape and this cleans it back up. And it also splatters that little edge, a little bit of dark brown in the middle, the burn umber. And then we're gonna take the burn umber around this outside edge to clean it up. And then I can come back with, I'm tilting the brush a little bit just because of the size. I do a lot of sunflowers that are this size, but on the wreath, they were a little bit smaller. Okay, so I'm gonna do a couple more, but let me show you up here that there is this little bit, I'm gonna put a little bit here but that is not gonna show at all. But this is gonna be the side view where the green's really gonna show underneath, okay? So, but this will help me get some of my streaks in here. See, I'm getting both colors. Push, push down and slide out. All right, and I did do, I did paint a couple of rows here. So that's why I made this first one kind of a little bit longer. 
I'm going to wipe my brush and then grab the moon yellow and make these a little bit shorter. And then it's going to have green calyx on the bottom. All right. So now this does have, um, it is touching right in here. But I think that makes it nice sometimes. All right. So I can now determine that I want one a little bit higher and maybe one down, or this one down and this one up. So this is a good time to decide. And sometimes you don't see that as you go. So now's a great time to say, oh, I'm going to alter that just a little bit. So I'm going to come a little bit lower. OK, and I can clean that up and make it more perfect later. But I'm going to come in here. My beginners can get learn how to make a very good one-stroke leaf by doing sunflowers. Because if you do enough sunflowers, you've done a ton of leaves, right? See how the orange color from the Pueblo comes in there? Now you notice I'm not going back and forth. I'm just grabbing color. This is going to be your big sunflower on your piece. All right, now remember I'm wiping it and just getting moon yellow. And then we're going to clean it up. So now I decided lots of colors, like you can see, like the blue, go really nice with sunflowers. But what I wanted was the intense cobalt like really vivid dark cobalt and then I added some bright greens in the center and then some yellow so when we're all done it makes it really jump okay a little bit more here see that a little bit more all right so I'm going to come in here and then here Pueblo and burn umber. So first thing I'm going to do is touch that up there. Make a little bit of burnt umber there and then touch the burnt umber under here. But then that's when I can decide if I need more Pueblo. And hopefully I won't forget to go do the moon shape inside the crescent moon there. All right, so then I came up here. And the wreath will just make it a little bit higher down at the bottom. So this doesn't have to be perfect here, remember, because we repounce it. But I did try to do it nicer in the beginning so that you see what's next. All right? OK. So I have lots of paint on my brush. Now that's a perfect streak. See that? Really nice burn umber. A lot of paint on the, the yellows, a lot of paint on the center. Wipe it off, just pick up the moon yellow and bright colors. And sometimes you don't have to put a second layer. And sometimes I did um, a few petals. Let me show you. On here, I folded a couple up. So you can do different different ones. I have all kinds of there for you to look at. Look, I can come up there and put the one up. And sometimes I make that one like a green, like a happy green, because it just looks like it's new growth. Okay, so if I do this, this is when I would go to the scruffy, the small scruffy, because I don't want to mess up the little petal I just put in. So I'm going to come here and pounce some burnt umber in the middle. And I can pounce a little bit of burnt umber here. Because that quarter inch scruffy makes it easy to see. And then I'm just going to pounce 
Love low. Okay. And there you go. So you just do it a little different if you're going to put petals up into there. Let's highlight the center of our sunflowers. And by doing that, we're going to pick up a little bit of the Pueblo on the scruffy. So this is a small quarter inch scruffy. And we're going to then get the highlight, which is the yellow ochre. So see, I'm just pouncing ever so lightly right there. And that's going to give us the highlight. So I use the color that was underneath plus that. So it blends in and it doesn't look so stark. See how nice that is? And it's going to give you a nice, there we go. All right, so I could probably have enough on here to do more of them or maybe even all of them. See, so it's heavier and light. Uh, nice gives it a nice little oh I got one more so I'm gonna I could get a little bit more in here and a little and then the last little bit over here okay that's a little scruffy now I'm gonna take my two script liner and I'm gonna add a little bit of this burnt umber into it and so the our Pueblo, I use kind of both. It depends on how light your petals are. Some of my petals are a little bit darker. So I might use, I'm putting a little bit of water, rolling it with a uh, script liner. Okay, and then I can come around each one of those if I wanted to and put some more streaks in here. So I have to have enough that you see it, there we go. And the reason I said maybe Pueblo, because the top ones you could do more Pueblo, and some of the bottom ones you could do more just for number, okay? And if you hit it right when it's wet and start stroking when it's wet, it will pull some of that Pueblo for you. All right, so when you're doing this, you're going to do this to each one of them. I'm not going to do all those right now to show you, but I'm going to show you on this one because I want to come up from here with some of the accents on the turned up petal. Okay. All right, so let's go to the next one. And because I said I'm not going to do them all, but I do want to do a few here. I'm going to go slower on these so you can kind of see the movement that I'm using. I'm putting, I'm steadying my finger, and it's better when these are dry, but if they are wet, sometimes you'll pull it from the wet center, some of the color. So look, I'm going to touch here, and I'm going to pull it at an outside angle on both sides, and then a few small ones in between. Now, this is something I haven't always uh, uh, added to my sunflowers because you're already getting all these streaks in here. But sometimes I just like to put a little bit more, a little bit of pizzazz. Now see, see how I can come in here with the Pueblo and add a few of these streaks. So if I went around and added a few of these, um, this color with the Pueblo, then I could come back and add just a little bit of, of the burnt umber afterwards. There you go. All right, so see how that changes from this side to that side? So I think you'll like that. It's, it's fun to add it and have all these rich colors in this um, brilliant blue cobalt colors that we're working with. Okay, so what I want to share with you next is we want to put some of this green in before we add any of the other flowers. All right, so if we're going to take our 12 and add our pretty green around here, I'm going to use my happy green and my sap green. And I'm going to go in between the two and then work it in. Work it in, work it in. 
some more. I pick it up two to three times and I'm putting pressure. Then as I'm getting the color I want, I don't push so hard so the paint stain and the brush at that point, okay? Now, let's look at some of the strokes that we're learning. The first thing we need to do is add the calyx, which I'm using actually an eight on those and pulling these. So let me grab that eight to show you. I'm gonna go ahead and save that 12 because I'm gonna use it in just a second. But first of all, I'm gonna practice here. Is that the right shading? Then I'm gonna start here and I, you really need to do it down on the table. I always tell people not to do it in the ear and that's what I'm doing. So I'm stroking around here, okay? And then the last step is I'm pulling these stems, see this? I'm pulling this to make a nice stalk coming from the side of that, that uh, sunflower, all right? So all these little tricks I'm showing you are right here and just be sure to wipe it as you go. And I'm gonna come with clean water right after I wipe it and then nicely get it all ready to use again. All right, so we're gonna do that. Then we're gonna flip over and I've already loaded this one brush to show you. All right, so this is the larger brush, the 12. And I want you to practice here. So our practice for this slender leaf is we're gonna chisel, push, chisel. And I tell people this is a lot like ribbon. Chisel, flat, chisel. And when you chisel at the end, I do a little curve. Also on this leaf over here, it's a two-part leaf. So look, we're gonna come here and we're gonna push down and stand up. And then you see how I still use this paint in my loading area. Then I'm gonna chisel, push, and stand up and touch that tip, but I put them together. I just want, that's what this one is. So I pushed and slid one side, and then I push and slide the second side and make sure they meet, and then I pull a stem, okay? So those are a couple of fun leaves. Now what I want you to see, uh, is these little ones. So you can use an eight or you can use the 12. And I use different sizes as we go around. So see the straight line? You start there, you push down. Then all you do is stand up. I call this a one stroke, it's a slider leaf where I'm sliding to the tip. So push, slide, push, slide. And as I slide, it comes to the point. Now this pressure right here gives it the, the fullness of the leaf. And as you stand up to the chisel, you get the tip of the leaf. So that takes a little practice. This is a perfect teaching guide to teach you that because I've got the long slender ones I want you to learn and I've got the single one stroke leaves for you to learn. All right, small and large, okay. So let's go in here and see what's gonna happen first. All right, the first thing, as I just showed you a minute ago, is we're gonna use the eight, and I'm gonna do the calyx right at the bottom of the side of the sunflower, okay? So I'm gonna come here, and I'm gonna do these little strokes that grab, this is what you would see when you see a sunflower from the underside, kind of. And some of them get so tall that you do see this right here. I can bring a little, a couple down or I can stop right where I was. All right, and then I'm gonna chisel. Remember the chiseling makes the stock. All right, so what we wanna do next is there's lots of little ones we will, little greenery we'll add to the daisies, but I'm gonna go back and put all the large fern and slider long leaves that I wanna put on here. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of medium just to help me move, okay? Now, what I did coming here is I came right in here, push hard, and turn. So I get that long slender. I'm gonna come here, more paint. 
pressure, stand up and turn. I want to come in here because I like to have some into the middle. A few in here. So see how nice it is? There's your stem and there's your leaf. Now I'm going to lay that down a little bit better. And in here I'm going to put some of those really pretty purple and blue flowers. All right, chisel flat. And it's okay to run it a little bit onto the next flower. But I put all these long ones all through here. And then I'm going to come back and I am going to add a lots of little fern and some little clusters of leaves. Because you don't see any of this grapevine when we're done. Just got to cover it really well. So remember, I had some that were two strokes. One, two. Come right in here, more. A little bit of medium. The one thing that's really good about one stroke is that if it doesn't turn out like you want it, I can reload it and stroke right over it. So people tend to want to wipe it off and start over, but you don't have to do that. You just pick up more paint and restroke it. All right, so we're coming around. I am going to do some fern in here. But I'm, I see I'm going up part way up here, come around, and I ended way over here. So as I'm coming around here, I did a cluster of flowers here, and they're going to have some fern all around it. But I'm going to come right in here, need a little bit more of the dark green, the sap. And you just decide. You come in there and you decide how much you want. You can start little, push and get large. But it's always, I feel it's always better to come at the bottom and go up. Okay, so there we are. We've got the long, slender ones. And then we're going to come in and put some fern. So when I'm doing the fern, one of the things I do is I come around and find my stems. I want to have a stem for fern here. I want a cluster that comes from here and here from all these um, purple blue flowers we're going to have. There, there. So this is the steps that I would lay out so that you could see how to come in here. Now we don't have to put every one of them, but I want a, a nice cluster in here. But I do like to show you how to lay out the fern because you can put as many little flowers. You can put the ones I put or you can put more. I'm going to do this whole grouping right here for you down low. I like the fern to hang down in the middle. Another one to go in here. And I do come in here along with flowers and I put these little guys, these one stroke leaves in here. And one of my tricks is I always, little tricks, <laughs> favorite things to do is I add some little small, small leaves. But I have some different looks in this one because of the fern I wanted to show you. All right. All right, so let's look what I'm going to do here. I'm going to come in with mostly brighter green, the happy green, and barely any of the sap green. Now what's going to happen, let's go right here. We're going to do the one center and then we're going to come off from there. And then you can clean this up in the middle. 
all right? So I'm just adding some of those here and there, and that, I think, gave us a little bit lighter touch, but I like to always start at the point. See right down here, it's gonna show better on the brown. All right, so have them right across from each other, okay? And then I can get the dark green and let it follow go and go up into that stem again. Or you can do a little bit more of both colors. All right. Always come up the very center when you do that. All right, so I have lots of flowers going in here, but I am going to, I'm gonna finish this whole section right here and then we'll look at the main wreath again and then you'll see how this all came together. Right over this with a nice good stem. All right, are you thinking about all the things you're learning? Different greenery, different pressure. One, two, three, and I'm gonna put some flowers right down here. So this is the section I'm working on. I did put uh, some blue and purple flowers here, so I wanted some little leaves. And see how I'm crossing some of these? I could cross this over that which makes just different layers of greenery, some's behind, some's in front. All right, and one more little fern, and we're gonna go to our next flower. Because these purple-blue flowers, I thought were really pretty when we found them in the botanical book, and we were able to create a nice way to do those. So when we're here, it's, um, it's blue and white. So I use cobalt and the titanium. And then what happens is that I picked up a little bit of the dioxazine purple in the outside edges. So see, that's a little bit of blue you get. So if we're right here, I'm gonna pick up titanium white since it was over there by the yellow and pick up the cobalt, all right? So I've got this going. Then you keep working those two colors in. Then I'm gonna dip a little bit of dioxazine purple. There we go. And that gives you that rich, deeper color on the edge, all right? so. The key is you can stroke here to see if it's right, and then you're gonna go along here, and it's a little bit of a wave. So it's one, two, three, four, five as you come around. Sometimes I'll do one in the middle, two, I'll come over here sometimes, three, four, five, whatever works for you, or you can turn your piece around, all right? So here's the five petals, and then I'm gonna show you on our piece if I layer them and how that looks, and the little trailing ones. So we're gonna wipe that right off so we're ready next time we practice. Okay. Now, the good thing about this color is it's gonna cover it really well. So I'm just gonna come in here. The first one I'm gonna do is right here. All right. Now. Coming over and, and really getting some of the dioxazine purple really gives us that deeper, pretty color on the outside. So the dioxazine, is, the dioxazine is net, it's on top of the cobalt blue. Okay, so I'm going to keep coming back in here, and then a little bit of blue and purple. Now what's going to happen is I did three my little triangle and they look like a gingerbread man the legs the arms the head if you just keep that in your mind it helps you get the shape now i'm going to come over here now it's a little bit of a wave do you see that instead of the teardrop i'm going to wiggle a little bit 
Now I made it a little bit bigger than normal because I have different colors that I want to put in the center. Okay. I also want to show you a half of one. So what we're going to do is I do these little pieces here that are going to connect with the stem so it's not a full flower. And then I did do the side view. So I want you to see how this happens. We've got one, two, three. Now I'm going to pick up, I probably should have put the darker back here. Let me put the darker back here. All right. Now what I want to do is get some more titanium white and cobalt blue. And I'm going to come right in front and do a few smaller petals in front. So you can see there's an inside. This one doesn't, but this one does. So I'm also, let's do a trailing flower while I'm here. All right, so I'm going to do one, two, three, and then I can do this little trail. Sometimes you might want to put the green there so you know where to trail. All right, so let's take... Or eight, and I'm going to come back in here and pick up sap and sap green and happy green, and I'm going to grab this little guy, little strokes, and pull him there. And this one has a little trail that comes from right here all the way back in. All right, and then this one right here, I'm going to I'm going to put the happy green coming from the flower. There we go. And that's when you can also put like three, three leaves. One, I got too much paint on there. Two, one, two, three, right there. And you can fill in a few of these little guys. All right. So what's going to happen here is I took an eight and I'm going to do this whole circle thing right here because it had this pretty color in here in the center of this flower. And the easiest way to give us that illusion was I put this first. So let me show you. You can also just come in and do moon yellow like I did on the teaching guide and then have that small green edge on here. Okay, just a little bit. All right, and then I put a little teeny bit of Pueblo. So see, that starts set in the center, and that brings that color over to the sunflower. A little bit more. So I'm just dipping my corner in it, in the corner. Okay, and then if you need to, you could come in here, and it makes it nice too, is to just the dot right here, the yellow the moon yellow, and I could even pick up a little white if I want to. But see, we're putting the moon yellow dots in here. Little teeny dots to finish it off. So all of those little steps just add to the character of the flower, and so it's really kind of fun. All right, so last flower that we're going to add. So see how that rich, that had the blue in it and the dioxazine purple? All right, so to finish them up, I am going to use the eight because I want these little teeny yellow flowers to be smaller. And you've seen me do a lot of daisies in our wreaths, but these just, they needed to be in here because they really added to our pretty little filler flowers with this bright, pretty deep blue and purple flowers. So look, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to keep coming over here and flattening my brush so that I make a nice daisy with the moon yellow. All right, so what we're going to do with these, and I do side view ones, and I just fill up as many as I want in here to fill it up. I'm doing the 12, 3, 6, 9, and then I'm filling in in between, usually about two in between, and you can change that up, have less or more. All right, so I think they really pop, and then we're going to do the little side view also. And some could be a little bit larger. Okay, 
Okay. All right, so let's go back. See, I've got my triangle. And I just splatter a few here and there. But let's look here. We're going to do that clock again. It's the 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 9 o'clock. And then that gives us a nice place to fill in in between. All right, so I just put one in between each one of those. But I could easily come in here and put three, or I could pull a little side one right there. And remember, on this one, you're going to need a little stem that pulls it. And I added a whole cluster of these pretty guys right along here. So little teeny guys. And I want to go to the finished wreath so you can see how pretty these end up being. And what I use for the center of it is one of the colors that we're using in here. And that is into a fresh paint, I'm dip dotting the blood load color, okay, and to the centers of that, and it pulls everything in together, okay? Now I have a final little touch that I really like, and what this, what I like doing is giving a little something more to the middle, even though it's fine like that. I'm taking a toothbrush, and I'm, it's going to be a paintbrush for me, and it has, I used a little bit of water and really mixed it in, but you need to practice this on something first before you put it on your piece because so many people tell me, oh, the water went everywhere. But if you let this all dry before you do it, remember, you could just wipe it off with a wet paper towel. So I want you to see, I'm going to start here very lightly. And then I can decide to go heavier. And you decide how much you want it. I want a little bit more on this. And I don't care if it gets on my flowers, but some people do. So some people lay a paper towel on it and they don't worry, they, so they don't have to worry about it. But that's all you do. And you can also come around and just wipe off some if you want to with a wet, pa with a wet paint brush, just with water, okay? So if that bothers you, it doesn't bother me, but just if you don't want it there, there's a quick fix. So there you go. And then you sign it with pride and you're done. So what I'd like to do though, is show you the finished one again. We'll scoot this up here and bring this one in and show you. Look, I really put a lot on this one. And see, I left it on some of my petals. But see how you've got to make sure you've got the blue, blue, blue. So you're bouncing around, making sure it's spaced in between. I've got little clusters of three up here and a couple there as we splatter around. All right. So I ended up with four, five, six on here because you have this extra one. All right. It's not, it was sneaking up there on me. All right, so how fun is that? I love sharing with you how one stroke painting makes it easy to do a sunflower. So we're putting all those little petals pulled from that center and it blends shades and highlights as we stroke it. So I would love for you to go visit platonline.com forward slash let's paint for those surfaces for wreaths I've been sharing with you and the wreath of the month kit. Plaid also has a Facebook group called Let's Paint with Plaid, and we have so much fun because everybody who's painting with us in the Let's Paint program comes on and shares beautiful pictures and things they've created. And it's fun, it's fun to meet them and see their questions and to show your projects. So I'm gonna be looking forward to see your wreath for August on your door and a picture on our Facebook group. Until next time, let's paint.